the president of the General Conference, Ted Wilson, has had a lot to share about the traps or snares of Satan. In a video he released, there were several traps which he actually shared which help us to be saved, which help us to avoid the traps or snares of Satan. Now, Satan has many traps, and Ted Wilson addresses three of them in a video, and I'm going to share with you the three of them, but the first one in this video. Please keep an eye out on future videos where I'm going to get into those other traps. Now, before I get into what he had to say and that first trap of the devil, which we need to know in order to avoid being or losing our eternal life, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Let's see what Ted Wilson had to say about one of the traps that Satan uses to defeat God's end time people. Satan continues trying to keep people from reading it by creating confusion and division. Often this is done by those who, instead of carefully studying God's Word humbly, seeking to learn His will, instead try to discover something strange or original. They try to support their erroneous doctrines or unchristian practices by wrenching Bible texts out of context, perhaps only quoting a single verse to make their point. Others try to interpret the prophetic symbols in new and strange ways. The Great Controversy explains how such errors can take place. Whenever the study of the Scriptures is entered upon without a prayerful, humble, teachable spirit, the plainest and simplest, as well as the most difficult passages, will be wrested from their true meaning. So there you have it. Ted Wilson had shared one of the traps that brings in confusion and division. It's misquoting, misapplying, misunderstanding the Bible and promulgating error. You see, if we don't go into the study of the scriptures with a teachable spirit, we are going to take some, definitely some errors, we're going to take some faults, and we're going to take some misunderstandings, and we're going to end up spreading those and leading others astray, creating, of course, as we've seen that video, confusion and division. Confusion and division, that's all Satan's game. That's the name of the game. Divide God's people against each other and create confusion in the ranks so they leave out and go elsewhere or hinder those coming in. You see, this channel is all about evangelism, Bible prophecy. It's all about um, answering some significant Bible questions too. And this falls nicely under evangelism because when people come in, they don't want confusion. They want straight truth that makes sense. So if we're looking to the Bible to get some sensationalist understanding or something that will be original and unique and just draw people's awe and ire to us, well, that's not the purpose of Bible study, nor is it the name of God's game, so to speak. The name, the game of the devil is all about creating confusion and division and also uh, creating self-aggrandizement for the one who's speaking or for the one who's involved. Um, the whole idea when we share the truth, we're supposed to be uplifting Christ, not ourselves. So we always have to go to the Word of God with a humble, teachable spirit, laying aside any pride and even any preconceived opinions or ideas, and letting God's Word speak for itself. Now, on the topic of the Bible study or Bible studying in general, there are individuals who are going to the Word of God and they will misuse a Bible text, maybe quoting half of it or only quoting one text but never looking at context. And this is the name of the devil's game, because if we look at the Bible, you'll see the devil used similar tactics. Take a look at this. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, Jesus, he has gone to the wilderness of temptation, and now he is facing the devil. And the devil says to them, if you be the son of God, notice creating doubt, Cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. You see, the devil here, he's quoting from Psalms chapter 91, verses 11 to 12, and he makes this key omission. What is that omission? You can read right there. To keep thee in all thy ways. The devil knows. The devil knows that we can go on our own way and our own route, and when we do that, we forfeit God's protection. And so, of course, the devil would omit that phrase, to keep thee in all thy ways. 
Because it's not about going your own way and still receiving God's protection. It's about knowing God's will for you and following that. And when you follow God's will, you have God's protection. But when you don't, of course, you forfeit that and you get the devil and demons harassing you and all kinds of consequences, negative ones. So that's the way the devil works. He takes the Bible, he misquotes it or omits certain things, and then it leads to error. And obviously, you know, those who accept error will lead to eventually damnation because they're practicing things which are wrong, teaching things that are wrong, and just bringing a shame to themselves and to God's word, which we don't want. Let's look a little bit more and see what also Ellen White has to share a little bit about this topic and issue. She wrote, P.S. This is the end of a letter. P.S. I do not wish this testimony to go into Brother Daniel's hands. If he acts with it as he has with the letters I have written him, telling plainly what the Lord has shown me, he cannot be trusted with it. He will misread. See? He'll misread it. He'll misapply it. So misapplying what you read. Misinterpret. So understanding it wrong. And the devil will stand close by to help him. Wow! The three M's misread misapply misinterpret and when you do those three things you be sure that you got the devil as your friend we have to be so careful you see how important that last quote that uh, ted wilson shared was we have to go to the word of god with such a humble teachable spirit otherwise we will misinterpret mislead and, and just mess the whole thing up it's so important we don't want the devil beside us in bible study we don't want the devil beside us when we preach and teach god's word mm -mm, nah -uh. So let us go to God's word with a humble, teachable spirit. Let us be humble without pride or any arrogance or any, or any will to you know, self-aggrandize, to self-promote ourselves. Let's just go to the word to teach the word and uplift Jesus Christ. Let's see what else she wrote. She said, Cannot the people see the way he treats reproof that the Lord is not with him? This is wild to me. So we can learn something by the way people treat reproof. Hmm. So when we receive reproof from the word of God or from the spirit of prophecy, the way we treat that shows which side we're on in this great controversy. You know, if we rail out against reproof, if we rail out against correction, which can change us, help us to change and save our lives eternally, if we rail out against that, doesn't that tell you whose side we're really on? That perhaps we're cherishing sin or some issue? And so I believe a lot of the time, people who decide to basically misread or misinterpret and misapply the scriptures, oftentimes it's because they're cherishing sin in their life. There's something in the word of God that perhaps pricks their heart that they're not really willing to give up. And so they find sneaky little ways and side issues and side ways of getting away and avoiding the real issue. We need to be honest with ourselves and we need to be honest with God. Let's not go into side issues and side tests thinking that somehow we can avoid the real issue that's at heart in our lives. That's why I believe as much as we go to the Word of God, you know, humbly praying before we go to the Word of God and, and surrendering ourselves, we also need to surrender our sins and put away them because those sins are going to be a barrier to us really grasping a hold of the Word of God. So let us lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. And let us run the race, the salvific race. And while we run the salvific race, let us go to the Word of God and honestly and sincerely study it out. That we don't misquote, that we don't misuse the Word of God to our own damnation, to our own problem, to, to, and to others too. Let us be careful how we interpret things. Let us be careful how we use the Word of God. And so I encourage you today, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be honest with the Word of God and with yourself. I praise God for Ted Wilson and what he had shared there today. And don't forget, there are other videos coming ahead where I'm going to go into the other traps of the devil that which he sets up for God's people. You can't afford to miss this video and the others going ahead. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And let me know, hey, is Ted Wilson out to lunch? What do you think about Ellen White and what she had to share? The Bible is true. Ellen G. White, wonderful writings. Let us follow them. God bless and keep you until we study again. Mm -hmm.